Hello, welcome to the Tutors of Life podcast where we research life so you don't have to. Episode 291, this is your host, Sean Tudor. And this is Sam. And this is a Tudor episode where we try to teach you something new. Nice. Mm -hmm. I don't think we podcast usually during this time because there's a giant sunspot right on your face. Yep, that makes sense. Yep. Damn, I can feel it on my face. Yeah, I'm going to try moving the curtain, but go ahead, continue. All right, gang. Uh, thanks for tuning in on this wonderful whatever day you're listening. Uh, we are going to be discussing the seven deadly horsemen, or as people know it, the seven deadly sins. We covered this a year ago, but I was reading The Law of Success, and Sam and I were trying to come up with some ideas of what to chat about. And she brought up the seven deadly sins. And I said, what a coincidence. I was just reading them. I was just reading them this morning. Mm-hmm. So here we are. Uh, I highly recommend. What episode was that? 52? Dude, 52 is a banger. <laughs> Go on YouTube and watch episode 52. Dude. That was some good times. Those were some interesting times. So, yeah. We've evolved since then. Oh, but. This one is not. No. It was just Mimi everywhere. The The last six minutes, Mimi was all over the place. Yeah. But she was very cute. Yeah. And it's some good content. Oh, yeah. Really good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Check that out. Sean goes on his lengthy rants. Gotta love him. Yep. Maybe we'll do him today. We'll see. Maybe. Okay. Go ahead. You want me to start? You start. What's the first one? Um, pride. Do you want me to go further or do you want me to just tell you what? what? Pride. I might have different ones. Okay. You n- name them all real quick. Pride, envy, gluttony, lust, um, anger, which is wrath, greed, and sloth. Oh, man, these are way different. Look up the seven deadly horsemen real quick. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the seven deadly horsemen. Um, The first one is intolerance. They're for sure called the seven deadly horsemen. Seven deadly horsemen. Okay, just continue and I'll keep looking. Okay, so the first one is intolerance. Uh, essentially what seven deadly horsemen are is they're, you're walking and behind you is seven horsemen you cannot see. Uh, these seven horsemen are deadly and they are there to fill your mind with negative things. Um, and you are in control of your thoughts and your actions. And so if your mind is being plagued by something you are unable to see and you are unable to realize, that will cause you to have negative actions so you need to be aware of these things of these seven deadly horsemen so that you can prevent yourself from letting it when these things creep in your mind because it's going to happen to everybody at some point in time these seven deadly horsemen one of them is going to pop in at a minimum and you will need to you'll need to be able to identify it so recognize it identify it and then change your thought process so that you don't act upon it right so uh the first one is intolerance and did you find some good stuff uh i'm just starting to find them what do you it didn't bring him up at first oh, but really? now i got it what did you find about intolerance uh i literally just found you it, just found it babe all right here's the thing with intolerance this was what i got from it and then you can tell me whatever everybody is different and if you want to be cordial you need to understand that everybody is their own person everybody's a little different and so you need to be able to Play in the sandbox nicely, as Brooke would say. Mm -hmm. And that's part of being tolerant. And so if you're tolerant with somebody, you'll be able to... 
you'll be able to build relationships. You'll have good conversations. You'll you'll have good uh, business relationships, etc. And so you're tolerant. You're you're accepting of people. You understand everybody's got difference, and it's not your way or the highway. And when you have intolerance, and you're you're living off of emotion instead of off of facts and logic and, and and whatnot you're you're uh you're just leading yourself down a bad direction where people will not want to be around you right mm-hmm. if if all you're doing is like just because someone's got different viewpoints as you you're acting emotionally and not on like logic not facts things like that you're being intolerant of their their point of view their situation etc it's going to look pretty bad upon you and less people are going to want to be around you and that's the first of the seven deadly horsemen i like to that um so i think this is someone's maybe recount of it i don't know um but they talk about like how intolerance has caused like uh like friendships um to be destroyed caused people to be in misery and uh has caused like wars yeah. Because if you think like right now we're really in a period of intolerance because oh. people are unwilling to listen to the other side or even respect that there is another side. There is no right or wrong. Like we can each have our opinions and Correct. we're right to those opinions. Um, but right now there's a huge portion of especially the population in the United States that think what they believe is right and what everyone else thinks is wrong. Right. Mm. So, I mean, and like this says, like, that is definitely something that could cause a war in the United States itself. One, easily. Mm. Easily, easily, easily. The Civil War. The Civil War. The fucking movie they just came out with called The Civil War. Yeah. We should watch it. No. Okay. I refuse. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go for it. Patrick Bet David watched it, said it was interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just like, what if it's one of those things where if I don't watch it, then I don't get mind control yeah 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 i hear you Mm -hmm. um the next two riders in the picture is revenge and greed oh and they travel side by side revenge and greed travel side by side i've okay yeah i could see that Yeah, yeah so greed we all know what greed is you care about money money more than you care about anything else. Mm-hmm. Or like money is the first and most important thing. It does not matter how you come by it. You can do people wrong. Uh, so you can do people wrong. You can do shady things. You can spite other people. It doesn't matter. Money is the most important thing. Forget family time. Forget friendships. Whatever it takes to make a buck. That is greed. Mm -hmm. And some people are greedy in money and some people are greedy in other things, right? Some people might be greedy in the realm of like, I guess that goes into gluttony. But like they're greedy with certain aspects of their life, which really take a toll on other portions. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like this person. And maybe this is a quote from Napoleon Hill. I don't know. Sure. Um this is the enemy that causes man to twist the screw until he has wrung the last drop of blood from his fellow man. Yeah, that seems. I wonder if this is the book. You might be reading the book. Is it page 569? No, 338. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, <clears throat> and, and so, yeah, greed, I mean, we all know greed is something you need to be very aware of. You, The thing is, with greed will cause you most people with greed will not go as far as if they were trying to serve people Mm -hmm. serving people is always a better mission than money Mm -hmm. but a lot of people you can get money quick i think by being greedy by being greedy 100 percent. you can like gain wealth by giving people by serving by serving yes thank you um Um, okay no, I think it's interesting, too, that I think revenge can cause people to be greedy. Yes. Um, I haven't, I didn't keep reading, so I don't know if they go into this, but, uh, like, I could see people that That's are... That's for sure the book. Is it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, because revenge, like, I, a lot of the people that 
I see are greedy are people that probably didn't come from good upbringings. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, and that can go into either ways, right? Like an abusive upbringing or even just a poor upbringing or um, divorced parents, so single parent upbringing, right. any kind of like disruption. Uh, I think people want to get back at their past. So either like prove their dad who was never in the picture wrong by being wealthy um, and stuff like that. So I think like trying to get back at your past can cause people to be really greedy. Well, dude, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a big thing. A lot of like you see, I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs do. When you look, a lot of entrepreneurs, they, they had to go through some hard trials and tribulations Mm -hmm. you know you you look at quite a few accounts of entrepreneurs and they didn't have a dad around or their their parents neglected them in some sort of way or you know their parents were there supporting them but they did nothing but work nonstop jobs (laughs) and were never home with the kids you know Mm -hmm. and you see that and like i even see that with um my family my my grandpa he was a full-time engineer for 20 years and he owned the platter and so he was gone every day from five to 11 Mm -hmm. five to midnight six days five five days a week he was gone that and then the weekend whatever and so when it came time for him to sell the platter no one in the family wanted it mm-hmm. because they were like despise the thing mm-hmm. essentially because they're like, well, we don't want to be like our dad and not be able to spend time with our kids. Yeah, And it's like, well, that was his doing to build something. Well, now you don't have to have your your full-time job. You, this could be your full-time job. Right. And then you could still spend time with your kids and you could ra- help raise your kids there and teach them business and all that stuff. But or the, you can hire staff you could, to like, right? Because you could right. delegate better. Yeah. The problem is though, like that right there is revenge mm-hmm. in, in a way of like revenge on, we don't want to be like that. We don't want to do that. So we're not going, you know, like we're, we're not going to do that. And you see that with so many entrepreneurs in today's mm-hmm. age of like not wanting to be like their parents yeah yeah it's or their environment is, yeah yeah revenge is a very interesting thing too because like i mean like the other day we we could have fallen into it we were selling um an item on facebook marketplace and this lady was being very challenging challenging yep uh and someone else had offered $200 more than she could pay for. Mm-hmm. And we could either take revenge from her being challenging mm-hmm. and being like, sorry, like even though you were the first one to respond and we said yes to you, like we're going to take the high offer. Mm-hmm. Or we could have been, you know, serving and mm-hmm. helped the person out. And we Which decided we to go that route. Yep. yep. <clears throat> so it's very easy to fall into revenge and greed, I would say. Very easy. That's why they ride together. Mm-hmm. We could have knocked revenge and greed off in one by telling that lady to kick rocks. Right. Instead of trying, like, working, working with, with her, her. working through a way. Yeah. Yep. So that is revenge and greed. Um, I do like how they talk to you about greed and envy is also, like, a big combination. Yep. If you, yeah, you... Envy and greed. Study the history of every man who is set up to become ruler of this world. Mm-hmm. And you'll know how deadly... Envy and greed. We've talked about envy before. Um, same thing when you envy someone or something or some ideology, whatever it may be, you will essentially become corrupted and not true to yourself. Is that fair to say? Yeah. So is envy a one or no? Mm-mm. Okay. No. Um. Uh... Okay, so the next two. Egotism and suspicion. I'm really curious. I I don't know how these two come together. Egotism and suspicion. suspicion? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we've talked about egotism, so like that can be, um, that's like similar to pride, uh, I would say. And yeah. the regular, the seven deadly sins. Yeah, yeah. I mean, having a big ego 
you know, everyone should have an ego to to a point, right? For sure. You should be confident. You should be confident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone should be confident, not ego. But yeah, I mean, there's people that have big ego waffles who think they're better than other people, hot shit, etc. Um, don't think think littler of people like I'm better than them. I shouldn't have to like be around them. Whatever. What do you learn? Keep going. Oh, um, but I mean, ego, dude. Ego waffles. Everybody got it. You see the guys in the gym with the ego waffles. You see so many people with ego, and there's time you you should be confident 100 percent. there's there's times to have full confidence but you shouldn't be egotistic and you shouldn't be out there like thinking you're better than everyone yeah so what they kind of talk about is um there's no hope of success for the person who suffers either from too much self-love or lack of confidence in others. So that's kind of where the suspicion comes in is like uh, always thinking like everyone else is not good enough mm -hmm. um, or like they're doing something wrong uh, and basically just not having faith in other people is right. kind of where the suspicion one is. Yeah. That makes more sense. I was curious. I was just like mm -hmm. suspicion, like how would that... But we also have to remember, guys, that this was written in the 1920s. Yeah. So. So egotism, essentially, what you were saying is you don't have much faith in people. Mm. And then suspicion, obviously, you're suspicious of people then. And so you're always questioning what they're doing. Uh, if if what they're they're doing is good enough, up to par, etc. Mm. I also like uh, how... Uh, Someone who likes to manipulate figures has estimated that the largest club in the world is the It Can't Be Done Club. It is claimed that there are approximately 99 million members of this club in the United States of America alone. It Can't Be Done? Uh-huh. That's hilarious. He's funny, dude. He's got some zingers in there. He really does. This motherfucker knows how to write, dude. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so have faith in others. Yep. Um, And don't go walking around like you have biggest dick in the room yeah it's a good mm. it's a good way to put be it. humble be humble the next one is jealousy 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 and they consider it or napoleon hill considers it a form of insanity no to the medical fraternity as dementia precox interesting Sorry. we're on jealousy okay um jealousy dude you're jealous of other people you're yeah, je didn't we just talk about this too? About being jealous of others? When? Maybe not. I don't know. No. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's that simple. You're jealous of other people. You're jealous of what they've done, um, who they're with. You're jealous if your spouse or your significant other gets some uh, extra attention from uh, the opposite sex, whatever. You get jealous by things uh, that you think propose a threat to you. Mm hmm. And a lot of the times, that's, I mean, so much of life is you trying to validate yourself. Yeah. And so if you see people getting things that you're not, it's easy to be jealous and go, why do they get it and I don't? You know, because you're trying to validate the things that you're doing, you know, or you're, you aren't giving your significant other as much attention as you should or quality time or whatever and uh someone uh cracks a joke at them or you know does a little hit on them a little bit or whatever and then you're jealous of that mm -hmm. and it's like well you know th you're you need to think about how you play into the role of jealousy and it's and as much as you're trying to as much as you're trying to validate your actions and your thoughts, like everybody's different. You don't need to be jealous of people. Yeah. Um, and you can do your own thing and they can do their own thing, et cetera. And you don't have to. I also like too how he doesn't. So he says it's like a form of insanity because a lot of the times that the things that you're jealous of are things that are not actually there. Aren't real. Yep. Um, so you could think that, 
I could be jealous of some woman talking to Sean because I could be thinking like, oh, Sean's way into her than he is into me, even though I'm his wife. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's something that I made up in my head. There's no valid reasons for it. Sean could be talking to this woman about real estate and I'm just making up a story in my head. And the worst part about it is once you think of that story like once, the more you manifest it and the more you think about it, like it's just, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Mm hmm. Um, so that was all seven, right? That was six. Was yeah. it? Um, so we had jealousy. Yep. E- egotism, suspicion. We had greed and revenge. Yep. Um, oh, does he count envy? As one? No. And then intolerance. Oh, he does not lay it out right at the beginning. Hold on. You can talk about whatever. Um, dishonesty, jealousy. I do think it's interesting. He does talk about, too, how most people think jealousy and suspicion should be twins together instead of suspicion and egotism Mm -hmm. um but i think i like suspicion and egotism better because they kind of go hand in hand of like you thinking everyone else around you isn't good enough Mm -hmm. um but i mean like you can think of suspicion in that that way as well of oh i'm suspicious of that woman's intentions other than just trying to learn real estate from my husband um, but I think that's because it's more of like, I don't know, it's just too much mental, like, uh, insanity more than actuality. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I don't think that s- jealousy and suspicion can be together, but just not as frequently as suspicion and egotistical. So bringing up the rear of this deadly group of riders, you see two horsemen. One is jealousy. And the name of the other has been purposefully omitted. He said, uh, each reader of this article may take inventory of himself and give the seventh rider a name that fits whatever he finds in his own mind. Interesting. So his examples could be dishonesty, procrastination, uncontrollable sex desire. If you think about it, think about any of your crutches. This could be, you know, mm-hmm. and it could be lying, uh, deceit, stealing, whatever. That's interesting. Yeah. Drugs, addictions. Drug addiction, for sure addiction. Yeah. Yeah. So gluttony, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the seventh one is what you make of it. Make of it. I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And then that, that makes sense why he says, like, one person can say they don't have any of these riders, but the other 99... 99,999,999 people can't. Yeah. yeah. So that makes sense because everyone has their own vice. Everyone. Right. Um, obviously, we'd all like to be... Perfect. Oh, dude, mine for there for sure would be procrastination. 100% so would mine. My seventh is procrastination. Yeah. But, I mean, we know people that theirs would definitely be dishonesty. Oh, dude, for sure. Um, gluttony for some. Gluttony, for sure. yep. Uh, what was the other one we just said? Um, Uncontrollable sex desire. No. Deceit, lying. Um, I swore we just said something else, but whatever. That's okay. Um, it's not in the book. Oh. Like, we said something. Oh, yeah. Um, addiction. Addiction, yeah. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I do like that. Because that one can change, too. Yeah, absolutely. Because, like, yours have changed over time. For sure. Mm-hmm. And based on, like, what's going in life, it can change, too. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, uh, that's so neat. I like that. Yeah, the seven deadly horsemen. Yeah. I love it. Be aware of them. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, honestly, that's all you can do with anything. You control your thoughts and your actions. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be aware of when these things are getting bad. I can tell when my mind's getting a little fucked up. Yeah. And I have to do some self-talk. I have to do whatever to knock myself out of that. But I can tell when my mind starts doing shit it's not supposed to. Mm -hmm. And then I have to be like, what are we doing here? Come on. Stop it. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I mean, if you don't 
if you don't become aware aware of it, you're not going to fix it. Oh, dude, I would love to just sit in somebody's mind when when they start going down a spiral. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. it's easy. Like, I am so aware anytime something bad or out of the ordinary comes into my brain, I just like, I'm like, what are you doing? Stop thinking about what are you right. doing? And I just correct myself and immediately start doing something else. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, stop. What, you, what is this? And I, and I would be interested to see what, like, if other people, they just, if they just don't recognize it and they just keep going down into, like, poor me. I think so. Um, because watching Caleb Hammer. Yeah. Um, look at how many of those people, like, they come up with excuses after excuses after excuses of why it's okay for them to spend money. And he has to repeatedly be like, no, like, you're making only whatever. Right. You're making no money, but you're taking out a small business loan on your brand. Like, how does that make any sense? Right. Um. And, like, the entire video, she's just, like, trying to justify it. And he's just like, why are you not? They just, like, it. some people, right. I, I don't think they get it. Yeah, I don't think so. And I wonder, I mean, it could be with age. It could be with backgrounds. Yep. It could be with a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we've talked about it before, obviously, right now. Mm-hmm. Like, people really need to start waking up and start, like, catching on to these things. The deadly, seven deadly sins and start correcting those behaviors. Do you know the difference between us and AI? Um, AI doesn't have negative thought. AI doesn't have emotion. It can't. It can't think. It can't like creatively think. AI can only take the information it has and like oh spit yeah, it's it out. About, yeah, it's all logic, right? It's mm-hmm. all logic. It's all fact. It's or not necessarily facts whatever it gets fed Mm -hmm. it's just logic from things that it's acquired yeah where um people have emotion they have like creative thought they have the ability to think and problem solve and things like that um which ai can do those things but it's all like calculating logic i mean you have to think we've read some emails and we're like this was definitely ai generated because there's no emotion right. or creativeness or anything to it so perfect so think about this the the world has been dumbing us down mm-hmm. being intolerant telling us not to question things like there's one perfect society in world you know it's the democrat party socialism things like that which both of those things lead into communism communism is responsible for the most deaths of human out of any other thing ever in the world um and so when you when you look at that when you look at those things i lost my train of thought sorry where was i um thinking about what just happened i don't know my brain went my brain went blank i know I but i also don't remember what we were just saying oh we were talking <laughs> we, we just, we'll, we'll work our way through this we were talking about how people fuck me it's gone sam what would you do to me i don't know um but people needing to question oh, things creative writing yeah okay yep so what they were saying is since we've been getting dumbed down and all of these things in one way we've been we have been we've been being taught not to question things mm-hmm. okay our best thing we can do is question and use our brain. mind yeah. our brain to think about things mm-hmm. and and to creatively think and like problem solving or well, this is whatever to question and so we've been trained over the last however many years with phones to not question anything. Just take in the media's info. You don't need to question these things. This is right for you. You know, whatever. Like, Don't, don't question, question the science. Don't question the science. Don't question the narrative. All that stuff, right? Want to know the first thing I fucking learned in my college science courses? Question, question everything. everything. Yeah. But so what's the best way to take over society with AI? To stop question stop creative thinking yeah because if you do if you stop if you stop questioning you stop creative thinking you stop what makes us unique using emotion and thought i mean it'd be so easy for us to just be ai to be to replace us yeah so if we aren't doing those things anymore and ai just comes in and replaces us why do they need us yeah 
You know what I'm saying? Because how many jobs already will be able to be replaced by AI? A lot. Yeah. I mean, just look at even just uh, like automated stuff now. You go to a fast food place, like if you walk in, it's all, you click on the board. There's mm -hmm. no person actually checking you out anymore. Yep. So that's all automated. Think of like a doctor. Think of, think of most doctors, and we've heard this straight from doctors. When they go in and look at a patient, they walk to the back and Google the symptoms. Mm -hmm. Dog, what? What? So like back when medicine was practiced, and this is what's so crazy, dude, and things have gotten so deep down the rabbit hole of fuckery, and this is in construction too, and stuff with so many codes and all yeah. that stuff. Back in the day, you acquired this knowledge and you had the knowledge and you needed to seek the knowledge when you needed m more help. That's why consulting is such a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. and, and back in the day, it's huge. Because if you're a doctor and you're like, oh, you're fresh, you're new. Oh, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't ran into this before. You couldn't just go Google it. You would go ask a more senior doctor, hey, what do you think? And then you would go through that experience together and go, oh, I know now. Well, and it's also, I mean, you got to think, too, with modern, like, sciences. We have so many diseases and things that shouldn't be happening that are happening. Yep. We have so many medications for fucking everything. Yep. And before, it was just like, okay, they're sick. Okay, this is the herbal medicine I give to sick people. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, then I'll try this other thing. Right. Right, like, they just... I mean, kind of, it was trial and error, but there was, there was so many less medications to give right. that you could only just try the couple that you had. Right. Well, and, you know, when you see things, like, it's like a mechanic, right? Yeah. I, I, I bought a car, an Isuzu, okay? And it didn't run. It, it would start up, but it wouldn't keep running. It would just die. It'd fall on its face. Spark was there. Fuel was there. Compression was there. I'm like, what's going on, right? Everything's checking out on this thing. I go to our next-door neighbor, Hot Rod Scott. Scott, this is what I got going on. He's like, cut the Cadillac converter off. I was like, what are you talking about, dude? He's like, I've seen this twice in my life. He's been doing it for 35 years. He's like, the Cadillac converter is clogged. Cut it off. It'll run, guaranteed. And I'm like, all right. He's like, he's like, you checked all these things? I'm like, yeah, everything's good. He's like, yeah, that's your only other option. I'm like, okay. Went and cut it off. Boom ran like nothing it wasn't a year later it wasn't a year later someone's like sean i don't know what's wrong with my car bop 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 all these things checked out what could it be it just does this and i was just like cut off your catalog converter I shut the fuck up you want to know what it was that and it's through like these things that you learn through doing and talking with people and whatever right yeah. and Granted, like that now in today's world could be AI just like that. Yeah. Because you you literally would just have one uh, one person seeing these people typing into AI. The symptoms aren't blah, 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 blah. Or the, the patient can do that. The symptoms are da, 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 da. And put in pictures. Put in pictures. And they just go in and then the, the maybe get a one look over. And most of the time, they won't even need to go in. Yeah. It'll only be for a surgery. And then guess what? Guess what they've been using for surgery? Fucking robots and AI? Yeah. For sur okay, dog. So how many people are we getting? Like what? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the level of people we're cutting out. And guess what? The more people, like the, the AI is taking over the people with education. Yeah. Um, because like... Like blue collar jobs, like I don't think a robot's ever gonna be able to do concrete or not all of it. Oh no no no, it already can. Oh stop. Oh yeah, concrete. For, that's like the easiest one. Oh, they'll pour, They'll set it up, three D print. They'll do a, they'll do a whole uh, AI AI to knock out a whole foundation. I've seen that. So, yeah 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 yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. Not sure about so that that's actually, but like AI, it's gonna be hard for AI to go in and plumb a house. It's gonna be hard for AI to go like AI is not gonna be able to go in and fix electrical in your house. But someone had to put in the program for AI to do the, like that floor plan. So there will be someone like it's a lot less jobs. A lot less jobs. But someone still has to like manage the AI. Right. But I mean, if you think still, about it, right? Yeah. So you still lose a bunch of those jobs. Yeah. 
but it seems to be more of the white collar jobs are getting think of attorneys okay dude an attorney if ai ai can be an attorney mm -hmm. as far as like contract contractual law and stuff yeah. like that i mean sure to go into court needing someone to represent you whatever but like boom that that can be wiped out title Dude, tell me title isn't going to be wiped out online accounting i bet you that that's going to be able to you punch think about turbo tax dude yeah a lot of things you punch into a thing and better that big push it out yeah there's a lot of things well there's also most countries the this the country sends you the tax bill yeah the u.s is interesting well, no because they they feed on people not knowing tax law 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. anyways sorry yeah no all these things like it's interesting where the world is going and because we are not using our brains our questioning ability our emotional ability to do these things mm -hmm. we will be taking out of the workforce um something like actually that really just intrigued me just now is um i'm reading how to how to read a book yeah um it's really long and dense but uh it was talking about like taking notes in books so he's just like most people don't like to do that but it's just like you bought the book especially like informational books there's like use it and like write in it because it's yours and you want this to benefit you so this is how you do it so it's like talking about like the different ways to um write notes where to write notes where to write symbols stuff like that for books interesting um and like there's like two things you're supposed to do is like i was like half falling asleep i'm gonna reread it tonight um because you're supposed to do something in the back of the book and then you're supposed to do something else in the front of the book okay but Besides the point, the other thing you're supposed to do is write any questions you have about the information in the margins. So, like, in the bottom, top, or sides. Sure. And I was just like, I come up, I think of a lot of questions while I'm reading books, but then I just, like, forget about them. I don't do anything with it. And questions like, in, about the book. Yeah, like, about the information that it's giving yeah, me. Yeah. So, that's, one, like, it makes me really mad that I've, I'm reading that on my Kindle because I can't do that. Um, but two, I was just like, shit, like I might actually start like writing questions or like, um, cause like one of the things they say is to star like eight to 12 of the top points of the book. And then I think that might be like what you write either in the back mm -hmm. is like the pages and like a quick gist of what those top points were. Right. Um, but yeah, I thought that was like interesting. Now that you're like you're talking about like questioning everything, I was just like, oh yeah, they even say, um, because it's good too. Because if you write the questions down, then that's like already in your mind. So then when you do come across the answer later on, you can write in the margins, answer to question, blah 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 is here. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm, anyways, sorry, just random thought about questioning it. No, I love it. Do you know why I'm I mark my books? So you can remember stuff better. Or so you can look it back at it and know what to look at? Well, so it is nice when I can just, like, flip two pages and see something highlighted. I'm like, oh, this was, for some reason, important to me. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that's nice, right? The other reason is um, uh, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, I can never have a sick book if I'm not writing in it. That's true. But you're not writing it. You're just highlighting it. I know, but I've written in other books. Okay. But yeah, I just um, like this one. That book up there, the big black S one, it's actually like a story within a story because it's two people who rented the same book. So you're reading the book that they rented and then you're reading um, them like leaving notes for each other along in it. No shit. Yeah, Emily recommended it to me, but I haven't read it yet. Interesting. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys today. All right, gang, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next one. Next one will be in Madrid. Unless Next one will be in Madrid. No, no. We'll do Tuesday ah, before we leave. You're right. Okay. Anyways, last one before our trip. Bye. See ya.